Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. We will be presenting a combined webinar between Microsoft and Blueware. And today we've got a really interesting presentation around how we can utilize uh, high-end visualization workflows such as seismic interpretation using Azure Cloud's technology. Um, up first, I'm going to introduce uh, Svera Bransberg dahl and he's going to give you an overview. And then uh, Sandeep Patnik will be giving uh, an overview of the technology that we're using from uh, Microsoft here as well today. So Svera, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Andy, and thank you for partnering with us in, in this event today. It, it's really exciting to, to be here and, and talk to everyone and, and be able to share a little bit more with the work we're doing uh, together with Blueware. So I'll start off and talking a little bit about what Microsoft is doing in the energy space these days. And I would say we are very fortunate of being able to partner and, and work very closely with some of the largest energy companies in, in the world. And this has been a really, you know, great journey for us where we have had lots and lots of learnings and, and we are working, as I said, closely with these guys as they're moving forward with the cloud transformation, but also the energy transformation that is happening as we as we speak. And I think uh, where we are today, uh, you know, we, we have been in some through some, in the middle of some tough times. We've been through some unprecedented times in the, in the energy space, but I would say if anything, the drive and the need for new and innovative technology to support this industry as it uh, pivots and, and goes through these transformation is, is bigger than ever. So what are we facing when, when we are working with companies in these uh, in these partnerships? I think I'll, I'll start to say that they're, they, they're running some very, very complex workflows. And I think if you look at you know, the overall cloud landscape, there's lots of industries that have moved and adopted cloud long time ago and, and are fully cloud enabled. I think the, the energy industry is still uh, you know, in this or on this journey and, and we have had to work diligently and able to, you know, to enable the cloud uh, to support these workflows in, in a proper way and enable companies to, uh, to operate and, and, and run their business uh, in a you know, better way than what they have been doing uh, historically. So as you can see here on this slide, I call it enabling current and future industry workflows. And I think that's going to be the real topic that we're going to do a little bit of a double click on here in, uh, in the next uh, you know, half hour or, or so with, with this team. In Microsoft, we, we can control some of these uh, elements uh, better than, than others. And I think we, you know, as we strive to empower customers work, work in partnership is really to say that we, we can work on the enablement of, of this. We can bring the right infrastructure to, to the market. We can be in the right places. We can facilitate sort of closeness to work so that latency and all of these things are, are, um, are, are tolerable. And we can deliver solutions, edge solutions, hybrid solutions that are enabling this transformation to take place. We have also had a very big focus on data integrity, you know, trust and data security, cyber sovereignty is, is a terminology that we use a lot that I think we have been key for this industry in order for them to, to adopt, adopt the cloud. And I would say that what every company that we are interacting with is, is looking for is really say they see the potential in clouds, they want to enable new ways of interacting with the data. They want to break out new insights from this data on the cloud platforms. And that's where we as I said, enablement, integrity, service, trust uh, is key. That will hold the promise to, to provide these new opportunities. But you need to do this with current workflows running. And Microsoft can, as I said, we can control some of these elements. And I think what is my last bullet here on this slide talks about the partner ecosystem. I'm saying that it's this partner ecosystem that really enables uh, the, the true uh, cloud transformation that the industry is, is looking for. And that's what we are here today to support, uh, you know, one of these innovative forward leaning partners that we're working with Blueware. And I think that they will show some, some really interesting um, pieces of technology here that is helping both movement of current workflows, enabling current workflows, even for all of us now sitting remotely working, you know, with, with a central data repository, central compute capacity, but also how uh, this will, uh, as I said, unlock and, and, and provide these new data insights and efficiencies that the industry is looking to, uh, to get out of the cloud transition. 
So with that, I think I will uh, hand it over to, to the, the rest of my team, or the, not my, my team, but my colleagues from Microsoft. They will really do a deeper dive and, and show how we can uh, are working with innovative partners like Bluebird to enable the industry's cloud journey. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Sandeep Patnayak. Uh, I lead a Stellar team that's responsible for uh, building WVD end user experiences, uh, the next gen of the protocol and the next gen of the clients uh, to provide uh, near local. Well, that's our goal, uh, near local experience for all kinds of uh, data, including heavy, super heavy data, uh, all the rendering and all that, uh, that, that really requires a lot of uh, GPU based um, computations and all that uh, right down to uh, users. Uh, Windows Virtual Desktop usage around the world has been phenomenal. We have users coming from various parts of the world uh, and the circular dots that you see there uh, are the regions where uh, you could have VMs running and run a lot of workloads. We have over the last year uh, added a bunch of optimizations so that the latency, the round trip time between the end user to the VM where the workloads are running and back have significantly dropped. Uh, and the square boxes that you see there uh, are really talking about how we have improved this. Um, over time, our goal is to bring more and more improvements, which I'm going to talk through my session today uh, to say how we're going to uh, address all the challenges uh, that customers are facing to enable remote workspace. Um, we have to think about, uh, you know, the experience and the impact on productivity. The users should be able to move fast. Users should be able to do everything that they could have, they were doing, they were able to do before when they were at work. Security and compliance are super important, especially where people are working from their own, uh, you know, home or other places which is not uh, a, a workspace that is controlled by the company. Uh, there are a lot of things that could go wrong. Uh, and of course, uh, when people are working remotely, they have to connect to resources on premises. So VPN, data center capacity issues and all that are super uh, concerning for IT admins if, if they are going to run out of them uh, faster than they can procure more items and therefore going to the cloud is super useful because there is almost unlimited scale. And of course, budget and resource constraints are uh, things that really uh, deter people uh, for on premises remote workload because you have to buy uh, $20,000 GPUs, uh, GPU cards and you have to buy millions of dollars worth of hardware, whereas moving to the cloud Everything is pay as you go, uh, and you could get things within the, you know, uh, within within few minutes after running a few scripts and all that. Now to um, talk about WVD, we have made sure that it's secure. That's where it's everything. The foundation is built around security for WVD. Uh, we have uh, updated um, the the remote desktop protocol quite a bit. Uh, now it's now we have something called Reverse Connect, uh, where instead of opening up a port uh, on the VM to the internet, it's about Reverse Connect, where uh, it's always outbound, no inbound uh, connections to the VM, so it becomes super, super, super secure. Uh, we deliver on all devices, all major platforms, Windows 10, Windows 7, uh, be it Android, iOS, Mac OS, Linux, web clients, so the users could use any uh, device of their choice to connect to WVD. The deployment you could scale up in within minutes um, just to set up to go from zero to having a production level deployment. It takes less than 15 minutes. Think about that. Com if you compare that with on premises, it would probably take a few months to get to that point. Uh, and uh, the cost is super, super, super um, inexpensive because it's again pay as you go the and most importantly to ensure that we are able to uh, encourage and make it affordable for all customers 
we have uh, included the licenses for WVD in uh, Windows and M365 licenses, so they don't have to pay anything additional other than the actual consumption on Azure. Uh, next, we'll take a look at all the clients we support. I talked about this, but the thing that you will probably be excited about uh, are the support for thin clients. Uh, we have support for Windows based thin clients, which runs uh, Windows 10 IoT Enterprise. It runs our Win32 client, so it can do a tremendous amount of stuff. Uh, and then, of course, the Lin we have a Linux SDK, and we are working with all major uh, OEM partners to bring uh, the, the Linux client. Uh, for WVD to those platforms. Let's look at all the features uh, that our clients bring, and this is very high level features this is not the full deep dive. The ones uh, that are really interesting probably for this crowd are uh, the, the availability to have dynamic resolution where uh, sometimes you have a set of three monitors or four monitors, um, and then you would want to go from hey, you know what, I have to do this quick thing uh, for the next half an hour on one of the monitors. Let me snap uh, my remote session to two of the three monitors and do stuff. Absolutely, without having to disconnect and reconnect, you could resize, you could drag and make it happen. Uh, we have also got requests for uh, multiple monitors and our Windows client supports 16 8K monitors. I would love to see somebody really try that, uh, but we have a lot of partners who really do that. Uh, now let's uh, talk about uh, device redirections. The one that probably really interests you is the pen. We support all 4096 pressure points uh, from the endpoint to the cloud, uh, and we support all angles and all that uh, on, on our Windows client, which is the most feature-rich client. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited that uh, for all these uh, high visualization scenarios and all that, you could really make use of that. We, of course, support every, a lot of other uh, devices, uh, camera, microphone, clipboard, printers, storage, absolutely all of them are uh, right there. And every box that you see empty doesn't mean that we're not going to do that. It's just work in progress. Our hope and our intention is to bring the same uh, parity across all our clients. Now let's look at a few of these features. I talked about subset of monitors. Here you see how uh, in, in this view, there are four monitors and the user has selected three out of four. So this can be done uh, prior to connectivity uh, to connection so that uh, they don't have to keep changing every time or the user can always make that happen uh, uh, dynamically uh, as they as their working needs change. Next, let's look at the auto update. One of the concerns that IT admins have uh, let us know of is the ability to stay up to date. So what we have done is um, the client now auto updates. I have a screenshot of our Windows client showing how it will notify the user that there's an update available uh, and how when the user either they can update right away or they can close the window and it updates. All other platforms since it comes from the store auto updates automatically. One of the big features we introduced um, in August was uh, the support for Microsoft uh, Teams. Uh, what happens with teams in general is uh, when a you two users are talking to each other, their uh, call data, which is the camera and the mic, uh, goes from the end user to the host VM and then to the Teams cloud, go uh, back to the host of uh, the host VM of the second user and down to the uh, second user uh, user's endpoint. Now there's a ton of uh, you know uh, devices that this data flows through and therefore a lot of uh, uh, lack of optimizations there. What we do, what we have done here is peer-to-peer uh, -peer connectivity even when uh, the users are connecting to teams running in a remote session. In this case, uh, the when, when you look at the next slide, you will see that uh, the connectivity goes directly from the endpoint of the first user to the endpoint of the second user, while still the Teams app is uh, running on the VM side. This means that all the heavy duty workload that Teams can run is being done on the VM side and the light camera uh, translation and transmission happens on the endpoints. Similarly, um, if you look at the data on the, the from the task manager, you'll see before the optimizations, it was using 
12% of CPU on the VM side, whereas after the optimizations, it is using 1.5% of the CPU. This means that more and more um, CPU cycles and GPU cycles are available for running uh, really heavy duty workloads that cannot be run anywhere else. So that's a huge improvement and benefit uh, for users and customers. Now let's look at uh, some of the other stuff that we have done here. In this case, you will see two videos run side by side. We have made, I talked about how we updated the uh, protocol. On the left side, you see the there's a lot of jittery and a lot of uh, jagged and the frame rate is really low at 11 uh, FPS. And on the right side, you see it's much smoother. And that's because the FPS is at 40. We have done some work uh, with the graphics team at Microsoft to bring uh, something called indirect display driver. And the remote desktop protocol now runs on that indirect uh, display driver. So this is very key for the workloads that uh, a lot of you use for looking at seismic data and look, uh, look at how um, smooth they can be. And this is really phenomenal and we are really excited to bring this. Uh, and in this case, you are looking at uh, 4K resolution. Of course, it is compressed to fit the slide, uh, but the benchmark we ran was at 4K resolution on uh, NV6 VM and it was phenomenal. Uh, there are many ways we can uh, further improve the way the, the round trip times, the la latencies that the users see. And one of them is uh, switching over from TCP uh, to reliable UDP, where there won't be any, uh, you know, wait for the packets won't wait for acknowledgements and all that. Um, but we thought, hey, let's take it to the next level and make it peer to peer. Uh, so this means that the connectivity is no more limited uh, to the optimized to the locations where WVD optimizations are there. You can get these benefits uh, and we have seen users uh, who, sh who who have shown us data, real data, where they went from 29 millisecond round trip time to 10 milliseconds. 10 milliseconds. That's phenomenal. It's it's almost like connecting to a, a VM on on premises. You're within a few uh, few miles away from the from the data center. Now this is unique to Windows Virtual Desktop. You won't get this on 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 premises connections. And and this is this particular feature is in preview right now. I request you to go to uh, the link that's provided uh, down there to look to read through the documentation and see how you can enable this for uh, your deployments uh, for your host pools in WVD. Let's talk about more exciting stuff. Uh, the start VM on Connect. Wow, this is being uh, one of the top requests for customers. Uh, from customers and users who uh, use dedicated VMs. Uh, in other words, either they use personal VMs or they use pool VMs with one user per VM. And uh, in this case, what happens is unlike multi-session, the, there's only one user who's connected or not connected. Um, and when the user is not connected, uh, because these are high-end VMs, there are a lot of costs for running those VMs during off-peak hours. And with this feature, uh, which is uh, going to public preview in the spring time frame, uh, the, the, the VMs can be uh, deallocated and uh, you know, there will be no cost for running those VMs at during off hours. And the, when the user really tries to connect, these VMs are aut started automatically and the user can connect. Yes, there is a little bit of the connectivity, the connection time is a little longer. We will provide, we provide the right messages that the VM is coming up but then the cost differential is pretty significant. So this is something that will probably uh, be super useful to this audience uh, because it is going to save uh, costs on especially really large uh, GPU based VMs. Let's talk about more features. I'm super excited to talk about all these things because uh, these are like uh, gold. Uh, so here you see a feature called multimedia redirection. Uh, this is just a start of what we are going the, the of what we can really do. Here you see we are launching Chrome browser and we are gonna um, run a video. What multimedia redirection does is basically take the video stream coming uh, into the browser and instead of uh, decoding the stream on the VM side, 
re-encoding using uh, real-time protocol and sending it down. It is just going to take the stream as is and send it down to the endpoint. Now, in this case, you see the the multimedia redirection is turned on and the CPU usage is anywhere between five to ten percent, depending on what you're doing there. Now, uh, which is that, okay, fine, five percent seems great a lot, but let's look at the experience today without multimedia redirection. Uh, like I said, the the big difference why you would see a large CPU usage here is we're taking a, a video stream, which which uh, and you see here it's between uh, 26 and sometimes it goes up to 44 uh, percent. It will settle down around 31 percent. So the reason why the CPU is being used so much um, and why it we're getting the benefit are not only at the CPU level, but also at the network level is YouTube, for example, has a a video that is encoded using multi-pass encoder, which means it is uh, you encode it once and you encode it many, many times, and it's super, super, super optimized for streaming. Uh, we have seen the sizes of the of video go uh, to one tenth uh, compared to if we really encoded that using the real-time protocol of uh, remote desktop protocol. So this is yet another improvement we are bringing to remote desktop protocol. And the reason why I'm showing these feature set uh, compared to a lot of other things we are doing is uh, this this probably this audience will probably appreciate the value of be having low round trip time and the value of having a really seamless video at high frame rate. Um, in the next slide, you will see um, that um, here I'm trying to uh, suggest some of the VM sizes. Um, every customer has a mix of a lot of users. Most of you guys are probably power workers and uh, you would end up having at least uh, a VM with a graphics um, GPU uh, backing it up. And the recommendation is to go with NV6 and that will give you uh, six cores of graphics. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Six cores of CPU and a graphics card, a, a part of a graphics card where you can do, and depending on your workload, you could actually expand that and get up to two graphics cards with um, uh, NV24 VMs. You could always go down to NV4, which has uh, just one core, and then some of the users can benefit from that. Um, the the sizing of the user storage again depends on how uh, how much data you want to store in the profile user profile versus how much is stored in a central storage or a different storage where all the seismic data is there. So it makes a lot of sense to uh, think about all those consider uh, consider all those things and uh, see what's the right size for you. Next, let's look at the bandwidth usage estimates. Um, we have all this documented on our website, so you don't really have to. Uh, I don't really have to go to all this. You don't have to read through all these scenarios, but the real call out there is. Um, you can see how by changing the encode mode, uh, the default mode is we will do a mix of uh, the text will be using a uh, 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 clear text encoder which will make sure that every single uh, character is super clear irrespective of the resolution of the monitor, DPI and all that. Uh, but H.264 would basically take the whole screen irrespective of the content. Uh, and instead of being a mixed mode encoder, it will be a single encoder and there are advantages and disadvantages depending on the scenario you look at. Uh, so if a if majority of the time you are looking at video playback, you'll probably set up the H.264 mode and then the bandwidth utilization is much smaller than the rich text uh, encoder and the Callista encoder, which is for images. So here is an, uh, just a uh, usage estimation so you can plan uh, or look, look at the different bandwidth requirements for end users uh, accordingly. Uh, um, and then with that, um, quick recap. Um, Windows Virtual Desktop is the best way to host virtual desktops and apps in the cloud uh, on Azure, especially which is uh, which is phenomenal because we're getting a ton of support for users who want virtualization and the whole team has rallied to make sure every single component, be it networking, be it uh, uh, VMs or storage, everything is being optimized for these scenarios. So we absolutely love uh, the whole one Microsoft vibe going on right now. Um, uh, it's very familiar uh, Windows 10 experience that comes no matter which device you connect from. 
It is super secure. You can deploy within no time. And then, of course, it is way cheaper than traditional uh, terminal services or uh, remote desktop environments that were that used to set up uh, earlier. Um, with that, I will hand over to Andy. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, really interesting technology. The the one thing I ask you to reflect in this is we've all used remote desktop, and when you experience Windows Virtual Desktop, it's a complete transformation. And I'll go through some of the the highlights of that. But what I want to do is actually show you a a short demonstration of the visual capability. Oil and gas companies are looking to move data to the cloud, but they also have um, very highly intensive visual workflows. What I'm going to show today is a, is a visualization um, product. It's a geoscience application uh, from, from Blueware. And we are going to show a, a large data set. It's a 212 gigabyte 3D post stack seismic survey. And the survey size is around 4,500 square kilometers. It's around the size of uh, Trinidad and Tobago. So this gives you an indication of the, uh, the size of the data we can use. And, and the experience that I'll show you is, is very fluid. And, and here are some of the, the metrics. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge amount of data in terms of cross line and seismic inline. So let me, um, let me present this to you you should see uh you should see the live display let me check this out and make sure it's um yeah projecting what i see now i think well, one thing to bear in mind is that the webinar technology exhibits some some lag um, but the key thing is what i see is a really fluid um, movement of this i've added a frame rates um comparison on here what we're seeing is a is a typical seismic uh, view here, and I can uh, just traverse through this view very easily. Um, I'm not going to necessarily go through all the aspects of, of what this technology can do. I really, really want to just share with you uh, the visual clarity that I can see here. Um, let me bring some other interesting uh, components into play. I generated an automatic surface earlier, and you can see the the clarity of this and if i zoom in here you start to see all the voxels um, a, as they appear and the amount of data that is here remember this is around the size of of trinidad and tobago so the data set itself is, is really quite vast and moving around this at uh, this frame rate is very very interactive and not something that you'd experience through um, traditional remote desktop it's all of the potential that um, Sandeep was describing there around all the accelerators, um, getting direct access to the GPU as if it was sitting right in front of me. I have another um, uh, interesting data volume here, uh, this probe, which I can seamlessly just move around the data set and it's extremely interactive. I can change the size of this probe um, and orientate it as, as I need to move, move the orientation around. Um, so, so the performance is, is phenomenal. I mean, the, the frame rates here that I'm getting uh, are, are very, very adequate. I'm on a, a pretty large display and, um, and I can move around here very easily indeed. So, um, with that, I'm going to go back to the uh, the slides and um, and then we'll sum up with a few summary points here and then move over to uh, uh, to Q&A. So some of the real world benefits of a virtual desktop from my perspective, it's really a no compromise experience. Once you see it and once you experience it, that GPU intensive workflows, whether they're CAD CAM or whether they're subsurface visualization, um, are really fluid. The first thing I found when I opened this up at home, I have a, a large widescreen display plus my laptop monitor. 
the monitor integration was perfect. It detected my monitors. I was able to move windows around and being able to project all of that functionality from the cloud like it was just in my uh, desktop environment was really important to me. The fluid visualization and the perfect um, image quality were also very important as well. And this is reflected in the uh, Windows virtual desktop experience. What this means from a digital um, transformation perspective, it really provides that ability to untether these high demand workflows, which were previously expected to be run in the office, can now be run directly from the cloud where the end user is completely remote. And obviously in the current climate where people are working from home, this gives corporations a huge amount of freedom. It also means that we can move data workloads to the cloud as well. Things like moving seismic data to the cloud, which is a key element of Blueware's vision, can be moved in conjunction with these visualization work workloads as well. So this is a true enabling technology for the oil and gas industry. With that, I will hand over to Q&A. And uh, so if you can ask your questions in the panel, we'll answer those uh, for you. Hey, Sandy, there's a question here for you around availability in the San Antonio data set. Uh, sorry, data center. Is this available in San Antonio as uh, many oil and gas companies are in that particular uh, data center? So um, the, the the way to look at WVD deployments um, is that the VM can be run in any Azure data center. It's just the connectivity uh, would go through a gateway, which is what uh, we call the optimizations part, right? Um, the connectivity goes through the WVD gateway, but the VMs uh, which run in uh, certain data centers and our goal is to be in every data center. We are slowly expanding. We have grown pretty uh, quite a bit since uh, in the last one year, uh, but the VMs can absolutely run in any data center. Sandeep, could you explain a little bit more about the um, the the ability to only have machines up and running as as needed? Um, are you able to talk about that that coming functionality next year? Absolutely. Uh, we call that internally as uh, SMONC, which is basically a start VM on Connect. Uh, the way it works is the IT admin could set up parameters which would basically take a VM and uh, put it in quote unquote sleep state, uh, which basically in other words is a deallocated state in um, Azure. Now this is automatic based on uh, the the time that the, uh, the where there is no user on that VM or there's no active connectivity and all that. Oh, and then when the user tries to start a connection, let's say the next day uh, through the WVD client, uh, the client will send a packet to the, uh, basically send an intimation to the WVD service saying, hey, this user is trying to connect, please go start the VM and the VM uh, will get started. Um, generally, it, it should not take a long time for the user to connect. Um, it's a matter of less than a minute. Uh, most of the time uh, and and uh, it's worth the worth the wait uh, because it saves uh, hundreds of uh, dollars a month uh, for having this functionality. Uh, so it's a huge saving point. Um, we have a question around uh, does the sleep state work only for Windows VMs? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, WVD now supports only connecting to Windows VMs. Um, I'm sorry if I miss uh, telling that. Um, currently, WVD does not support connecting to, uh, which is remoting into Linux uh, VMs. It's only Windows right now. Yep. So, so one of the things we've, we've put together is uh, uh, I don't know if you've ever been into uh, to any Microsoft Technology Center. Uh, we have uh, we have those uh, those places where we can do 
uh, a deep engagement uh, with uh, with your teams and we, we, we've already been doing like hundreds of these in the last uh, couple of uh, years uh, we have one in Houston uh, near the town, uh, town and country center uh, so uh, we would uh, we, 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 we have uh, we have set up a, a data environment and then working with with blueware uh, to have these technologies uh, on that center uh, so feel free to reach out to your uh, Microsoft account team or, or you can visit the link here, uh, microsoft.com slash MTC. Uh, we'll be more than happy to uh, to host you and MTC go through the technologies uh, through through a, a planned process. Uh, so feel free to reach out uh, if you want to test any of these technologies. Thanks, Katri. With that, we will conclude. Thanks everyone for attending.